Hi. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Selenium web driver in Java to automate a web page and perform a basic test of the results of automating that page. All right, so I have this set up from a previous video. I have my test built. I have the driver installed in, in SQL and Selenium. I have it linked to my static variable driver, and I close it at the end. So I need to create a test. All right, so I'm going to use the CDC's website for BMI calculations. Uh, you really should get permission from any site before you automate off of them. Uh, as a U.S. taxpayer, I'm pretty sure I own this website, so I'm pretty clean. Plus, it's for educational purposes. I think we're fine. So that's the website I'm going to test. Uh, what you should know before you test is how the site works. So let's pretend that I'm not heavy, and let's say I'm only 160 pounds. I enter a feet, inches, pounds, calculate, and look at that. Hey, I'm healthy. I'm a BMI of 23. I want to recalculate. I click up here and I run it again. No thanks. So I want to automate this 5, 10, 160. And then I want to verify that this number appears. Okay. So let's make that happen. So I'm going to go to my code. And I'm going to use this as my URL. So I'm going to create a new test here. And I'm going to put that URL in there. This will load it up. And let's do a quick smoke test to make sure it appears. Make sure my driver's working. It's real embarrassing whenever you write 30 lines of code and you realize that the link didn't load up the first time. All right, let's try it again. Um, make sure I save. I probably forgot to save. Run that test again. I commented out the close, so I see that it stays open. All right, smoke test passes. It launches. We can go back and close it again. And save. We're good. All right, so what we have to do is we have to automate the page. And to do so, we need to understand the page. Let's go back and look at it. I need to know what these boxes and this button are. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to inspect each one of these buttons. And I notice I've got an ID here. So I'm going to use a Selenium selector to pick this item. So back to my code. And again, I'm going to recomment this just so we can watch it work. So I need to set up my web elements. In general, whenever you write these tests, you're going to do the following. You're going to link to the page. You're going to get to the web elements. You're going to automate the elements, which means putting text in there, click, whatever you got to do. You'll then test the results. And usually testing the result means you have to get new elements. Quite often, these pages refresh and get something new. So this is your overall logic. So let's set up our web elements. And we're going to use a variable called web elements. And I'm going to use the names that they use on their site, so I don't get confused. So we see this is ID feet. Right click, inspect. The next one is inches. Right click, inspect pounds. Nice and simple. I like when people use their variable names smart. So I'm going to call it feed here, driver.findElements, and we're going to use the by class. Now, see when you get a drop, bunch of selections here? These are CSS selectors, XPath selectors. This is how Selenium 
choose the things on the screen. ID is the easiest. If you can get an ID, just go with ID because you know that IDs have to be unique with the exception of radio buttons. If there's no ID, XPath is the next best trick. And I'll show you one of those here before long. Oops. Right, let's um, imagine for a minute that the pounds didn't have an ID. Okay, you inspected it, and there's no ID there. It happens a lot. So what I'll do is I'll come over here and go, oh, what can I do? There's a bunch of things I can do. I can just search for text. I can search for CSS properties. But again, the quickest way is to right-click over here in your Elements range. You copy, copy full XPath. The full XPath will be the entire path through the HTML DOM. It'll start with HTML, then go to body, and it'll count the number of divs and forms. It's a pretty big mess. You can build them by hand, but it's so much easier just to copy them. There it is. Like I said, you could build that by hand, but who wants to? If you don't believe me, go back and walk through the HTML document one line at a time, HTML body, the sixth div, main, it, it's a lot of work, but this will directly take you to pounds. And the last thing I need is the button to click. I forgot to get the name of that. Oops. Right click, inspect. And it's called ID Calc. Good name. Okay, so we've gotten our on-screen objects. Now we need to do something with them, which basically means we need to put the date in there. So I'm going to send keys. I'm going to send in five for five inches, 10. And we're going to pretend I'm only 160 pounds. And we'll click the button. Awesome. Let's watch it work. I love watching these things work. Maybe even test. Loads up. It's not working. I maybe it just wasn't saved, or maybe my scroll screwed it up. I see what I did. I was dumb. I put ID here instead of XPath. So I was getting the error, no such exception. And when I went back and looked at it, it said it can't find this ID, which isn't an ID. It's an XPath. Let's see if it works now. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to do anything. If you missed it, I'll kick out the calc button for a second. Save, Maven test. And hands up. I'm just nothing up my sleeve. Boom. Okay, so let's now test. So I'm going to hit calculate here. And I'm going to look at 23. I'm going to inspect 23. We see it's coming in in a strong class, 
BMI. So I'm going to check to see if I get 23 back, because that's the number I expect. So I'm going to calc here. Now, often these websites are slow. Um, sometimes we need to pause here or um, create some type of wait state until the um, page refresh. I'll do that in a later video. I know this page is instantaneous because it's just a JavaScript rewrite. So I'm going to get the web element. And I forgot what it was called already. Whoops, I can't be two pounds, can I? This is called inspect BMI num. And this is a CSS class name. BMI num. And then I'm going to get the text out of that. There are a number of ways you'll have to do that. Get text will often work, but not always. Uh, you might have to get value and just play around with them. Depends on how the website's set up. And then I'll run my test. Oops, let's do spec equal or cert equal. Okay, so I'm expecting this to pass. Boom, hand to God comes up, bang, 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 done. One failure. What do we get a failure? Expected 23, but was blanks. Hmm, so what did I do wrong there? Let's find out. All right, so this looks good, uh, but get text doesn't work here. Get text works really well for form elements. doesn't always work for DOM elements. So instead, we're going to use get DOM property. And that property be... It's text contents. Yeah, text content. Okay, so let's see if this one works. Hand of God, boom. Yep, it passes. All right, so what you've seen with a little bit of glitches along the way, you've seen how to find elements on a screen. You've seen how to interact with those elements by sending data or clicking. Um, you've then seen how to get objects out of the HTML using text content. And you see how to do a simple assert. Excellent. Thanks for watching. Good luck.